Hello, uh, this is the first and what I'm hoping will become a series of short little studies uh, from the Bible or, you know, biblical reference type of things. I'm planning on maybe working some stuff with uh, the Chronicles of Narnia as well later. Uh, but this will be the first of hopefully an ongoing thing. I'm trying to try to do one every week. And in fact, I would like this to be more of a forum to where if like one of my friends, uh, you know, if they don't have a camera, I can come over with camera. If they would like to lead a, a little short thing or share something, uh, that would be wonderful. Or if you are somebody who I've not met personally, but you would like to be able to share something, uh, perhaps you can upload something to YouTube and I can link over to it. Or if you, we can get to the video to me in any other fashion. But this is the first of what I hope will be many little short, just studies of, you know, if God's show, showing you something or you, there's something you want to share, or maybe there's a topic that you would like to have covered. Uh, now I am not called to preach. I'm not a pastor or anything. I'm just a common guy. I'm not a seminary student. I'm just a regular guy. But I am one who, when looking through spiritual gifts, uh, it is one of my gifts is teaching and the other is prophesying. Now, I'm not saying prophesy like I'm going to suddenly predict the future. Uh, we look at the, the, the gift of, of, of the prophet as being one who will find the Word of God and will boldly be able to speak it. And I'm you now using this as an opportunity to use those spiritual gifts. But anyways, I wanted to talk to you about something that uh, this came across. I was uh, out doing my work. I'm currently working as a courier, so I spend a lot of time in a car, which my hair is hopefully somewhat decent. I've just I had a hat I wear all day. But uh, I noticed something. I was listening to a New Testament and everything. I've been really trying to enrich myself a little bit. And I was listening to the New Testament on a CD. And uh, it's a New Living Translation that had come through. And there was a verse that really jumped out. So I want to kind of lead into this, though. Uh, I want to take you into Matthew uh, chapter 4. And I'm going to start in here. Uh... Over here in verse 8. There we go. And this is where Jesus is. He's been fasting for 40 days. So he's very hungry. And I actually heard uh, it mentioned this week that 40 days would be like your limit of the human potential of fasting and not eating or drinking anything. And, you know, you're you're pretty near death. You're really weak and, you know, hurting right now. Um, but anyways, here we go. And this I'm reading from a Holman Christian Standard, um, which I bought over at a seminary because apparently they like it over there. Uh, but anyways... So, all right, Matthew 4, 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus told him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and immediately angels came and began to serve him. Uh, now, other uh, translations I've heard, well, well, or other books of the Bible even, you know, um, We'll mention that the devil left him for a more opportune time. So, now, I I know there's some people, I don't know how many of them are, but I've heard of this, of people who don't think Jesus could have ever been tempted, really. Well, I submit to you that, yes, he can be tempted. After all, Satan did make his own attempts, and he, apparently he came back, which were not mentioned uh, a lot of the other times or whatever. You know, we don't get a listing of Satan coming and tempting him again. But now here's the thing to, that I kind of note about this. All right, so the devil shows up and he takes Jesus up to this high mountain. He shows him everything. He says, you know what? I'll give this all to you if you fell down and worship to me. Now, what was Jesus being tempted about? Well, granted, God created all this stuff. Satan is only permitted to have some sort of dominion. But when you look at it in the perspective of all the stuff of what Satan, you know, Satan's been allowed this domain, Right? And it's basically, he's kind of saying to Jesus, I'll give this all back to you. You don't have to go and die on that cross. You don't have to suffer and go through all this stuff. I'll just, you know, let you take it all back from me, and I'll kind of relinquish if you just bow down and worship me. Because all Satan really wants is to replace God. He wants to be worshipped. So that's kind of where the temptations come from. From I've heard this from other people, and this kind of perspective I take, it's kind of Satan saying, you know, you don't really need to die. I'll just give it back to you. So, of course, you know, Jesus used the scripture and resists that temptation. Now, there's another time that I believe it's documented that Satan tempted him on this very issue. And I'm going to take this over. I've got it pulled up here on my computer. Excuse me. Uh, Matthew 16. And I'm going to start with verse 22. Uh, this is right after uh, when Jesus is, you know, called his disciples together and says, well, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter had stepped up and said, well, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Peter's kind of on high on a cloud. Uh, but then, of course, you know, Jesus starts telling them about he was going to have to suffer and die. So Peter pulls him aside and says, thinking he's going to rebuke him. 
And so here I'm going to pick up Matthew 4 or Matthew 16, 22, pulling out of Matthew today. Uh, then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Verse 23, but he turned to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me because you're not thinking about God's concerns, but man's. Uh, where, where this had kind of jumped out slightly different me, for me, that was the, the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Uh, the New Living Translation, which is the one I, I'm listening to, it's, it's easier for listening. He, but when Jesus turns to Peter, he says, Get away from me, for you are a dangerous trap to me. And uh, I was looking here on a commentary, and it, uh, where's... But, ah, it is, Satan is now tempting him. We do notice this, because notice when he turns to Peter... He says, get behind me, Satan. Now, Satan apparently had jumped in there and had tempted Christ, right? Uh, where was the word? But the, the idea, though, is this stumbling block or uh, of something getting in the way of a man's thinking of this and not God's thinking of this. Now, here, here's what I'm, where I feel Jesus was tempted on this. He knows he's, it's going to hurt. It's gonna, he's going to suffer. You know, the cross and all that went with it, uh, he's going to have... You know, he's going to be beaten, he's going to be whipped and had his skin torn. Anyone saw the Passion of the Christ and they'll give someone, you know. He knew he was going to have to suffer all these things. He understood that it was it was going to be horrible for him. And so a temptation for him would be to escape that. And even while on the cross, he's being tempted to escape that. So, oh, you know, everybody's mocking him, says, well, don't you just come on down that? And, you know, and it's, it's a common saying that we Christians have. We talk about, so, well, if he wanted to, he could have called down all these angels and wiped out everybody put him on there so the temptation is there to be able to come down and to to not suffer all of this and that would be the dangerous trap or the stumbling lock or the offense where peter is is basically satan's kind of punched peter to make him say this with that man mind that jesus because jesus was fully man at this time even though he was fully god he was also fully man it's like oh yeah your body's going to suffer don't do this. You kind of see what I'm saying? Is thinking of man's concerns and not God's concerns. Man's concern is pain. All the suffering that's going to go through. Now, a lot of people will talk about fear and say, oh, well, fear is just this horrible thing. Well, fear is not a sin. Fear is an emotion. We just can't let it control us. But we do have it. From what I'm getting from this, Jesus had maybe a bit of fear of knowing what he's going to have to suffer for. This is not some you know, ridiculous fear of the unknown. This is knowing what he's going to go through and being, ooh, man, this is going to be rough. But he keeps on going. See, this shows us a couple of things. First, we learn how to deal with fear. Now, you can definitely easily say Jesus had a lot of courage. You know, he showed bravery. But I want to go and pull out something. First John 4, 18. And I'm going to grab... I got a lot of options in front of me. I'm going to grab from a New American Standard version. Uh, New American Standard is one of my favorites, anyways. But there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. Now, Jesus is about to go and suffer punishment. He's going to be punished for all of us, for all of our sins. He's going to suffer punishment on that cross. But that fear that he would feel is cast away by that love that he had. For us so that's cool that's I, I to me that shows a way to deal with fear uh, everyone likes the sound of music I hope but they go and think about all your favorite things when you're afraid well Jesus favorite things were us and he thought of us and how much he loved us and that works for us you know uh, next time something kind of maybe jumps at you think of the things that you love or people you love or even of God who you love perfect level cast out fear now, the other thing I want to get from this, and I completely lost my train of thought. I'm going to edit that out later. Oh, yes, the other thing that I took from this is if I have concerns, there, there's a lot of people who, who seem to forget about the, the humanity of, of Jesus. He has suffered the worst possible, you know, death and everything. And he has gone through a, a human life. The only thing he didn't do was sin. But he, you know, I'm sure he was ill, caught a cold or whatever. Uh, he went through a lot of things. You know, maybe at some point when he was a, a young boy, maybe money was tight, you know, with, with Mary and Joseph, with his parents, earthly parents anyway. Uh, but 
the humanity of Christ is important to remember because we remember the humanity of Christ that he understands and anything we want to bring to him. What, what's concerning you right now are maybe you're looking at a divorce or you're a child looking at your parents getting divorced. Uh, maybe, you know, money's tight for you. I know it's been for us. You know, what is your concern? There is no reason you can't think that you can go to God and not have him understand what it feels like. One thing that we, we love to express is that Christianity, true, you know, following Christ, isn't about religion. It's about a relationship we have being restored to God with Christ. We can go to Jesus and we can talk to him about all those things, all those problems, all the things that frustrate you. And I've done this on many times where I'm being like, there's times I've even been mad at God, just like, why, why, did, why did this happen? You know, that's what a relationship is like. We can talk to him. He, he wants us to share our concerns with him uh, and just cry out to him. It's a relationship. It's a friendship. We are restored to him. We draw closer to him by letting, ta talking, expressing our feelings to him and our concerns and all our worries and knowing that he understands. He has compassion on us and he loves us. We can go to him with anything. You know, sometimes we pray because we're leading something. Sometimes we just pray because we need someone to talk to. And who better than our best friend in, in the world who loves us? I mean, yeah, there's human friends you can talk to, but you can always talk to God about stuff. It's great, but that's, that's the main thing I would like for us to take from this is Jesus understands. He's even felt fear. So when you're afraid of something, remember, love casts out fear. Remember, you can tell Jesus about it. Because what is fear? You might be worrying about whatever. You can talk to Jesus about it. Now... If you don't have that relationship with Jesus where you can go and talk to him, that's a whole different other thing. Like I said, there's a difference between a relationship and a religion. Uh, religion might be something, well, you make sure you go to church every Sunday or, you know, you know currently there's people who are observe, observing Lent or whatever. Or whatever. There's a lot of things we do as activities, which is part of religion. But all that is nothing without that relationship. Now, how do you get that relationship? Well, we've talked about Jesus was dying on a cross for us because he loved us. Well, he was resurrected on the third day later because he was completely innocent and he took all our guilt, all of our sin, and paid the penalty for it so we could be restored to him. All you have to do is believe on him, believe that God raised him from the dead, pray to him, confess it to him. Confess that you're a sinner, confess you believe that Jesus took a, took all your sin and put it on there and, uh, and took it upon himself and was raised on the third day. Pray all that to him. That's all it takes is just, you know, if you, the Bible says if you believe with your, on your heart and you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. And then you are, have a full relationship now. You are now part of the family, you know. He's, you are, we are adopted as sons to God. And that's all it takes. It's, it's a very simple thing. You know, this, so this isn't about religion. This is about relationship being restored to God to where we can go and talk to him about anything. I mean anything, even if you're upset with it because you don't understand something, which we're going to go and get into that topic later about, you know, when God doesn't make sense kind of thing. Because uh, there's a really good example from the Chronicles of Narnia, and I'll cover that. But now, as far as anything else in this, um, I've talked to my friend Philip to see if he would like to, you know, prepare some things. Uh, so next week or next time around, it will could be me or it could be one of my friends or someone else. Uh, anything you'd like to share in the discussion field below, feel free to talk about this topic or share some verses or talk about what God's doing in your life or maybe something you would like us to try to look into. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm no scholar, uh, but I, the, if you put me as something down there in the bottom field, that gives me something I need to go look up, and that, that's, that's good for me, too. Um, but anyways, and also anything you'd like to share. Now, this is also, this is not a room for, oh, well, we're going to debate, because I know we, we have a lot of atheists out there who they just want to go through and badmouth thing. Well, this isn't the forum for that. You can go and file your complaints wherever you want to, uh, but this isn't the place. Uh, no one ever came to Christ for arguing and debating with them and about the existence of God or any of these other topics. No one ever came to Christ, really, from that. It's the Spirit of God that leads people to Christ, not any clever argument I'm going to make or anyone else is going to make. And I'm more concerned with sharing Christ and letting the Holy Spirit do its work, and I'm just trying to do my part. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you all feel like sharing. I'm going to maybe try to do something more with some production value on this. Maybe throw a verse up on screen for you. Uh, 
But yeah, I hope you enjoy this, and this will be the first of hopefully many. Also, I'm looking for a way to name this. I'm kind of thinking of it with my superhero theme of things. I thought about, you know, putting it out the true superhero or something. Uh, but if somebody's got some good suggestion for a name for maybe these, these little forums, open forum type of things that I would like for you to share videos with me as well, uh, let me know what you got an idea of what to call this. All right, see you next time.